and he was just diagnosed in 2019 over at Mayo Clinic with autism. Um, okay. He's just he's just five and a half now. He's in preschool, but he's currently going into kindergarten. Um, and one of the big things that we were working on with our worker originally kind of went over a whole plan, including, you know, nutrition, education, um, the medical piece to it. Uh, but some of our big concerns and um, things that we needed to work on the most were he is an eloper. Okay. And he would not have the, um, he wouldn't be really a, totally aware of the safety issues on running out into the road. The area that we live, there's a very busy road. There's an airport. There's a, a straight river. Um, there's an airport. There's right. A, yeah. Train and nearby and the freeway is not very far from that. Okay. Um, so it's a very busy area on the edge of town. And that was a big concern because he could quickly get out of our yard. And so our worker talked with us about all of the pieces uh, for his care and what that would mean and what would work for us. And um, of course, then she gave us the options of, you know, would we want to work with ECRA because they really would help us with the budgeting end of things, um, what he would qualify for, and help to get all those pieces in line because we were not aware on how to do all that. Right. And so ECRA worked with me. I got a couple of quotes, estimates on uh, a fencing, a local fencing company here in our town. And they were able to help us to put together the pieces to put up a six foot privacy fence. Um, we tore the tore everything out of there that was in there that was pretty dilapidated that wasn't holding the, um, holding right. up kind of an old, old metal fence. And right. we tore that part out and they put in a nice privacy fence. So now he's able to safely go play out in the backyard mm -hmm. and um, right. loves being outside. And out there, he's got a trampoline and a swing set and a sandbox, little right around the yard toy. And so it's really opened up a world for him before it was hard to let him go outside. Right. That's the other okay. piece, it's been wonderful. And the other part of it that Acura has helped with now um, is they helped us to get a ring system put in for security. So he wouldn't just try to get out of doors. He would climb out of windows and that kind of thing. And so we were able to put together a ring system on all of our doors and windows so that we would alert if he was trying to get out. And that's just okay. for the, his own safety. So he didn't uh, run off and, and get lost or get hurt. He's nonverbal. And so he does use a talking device. We were able to get that um, and get those pieces in place for him. Now he's starting to come around and be able to speak a little bit more and be a little bit more vocal. So uh, as Acura has really helped us and made a really big difference in all of our lives here. Um, and the ability to be able to help him out doing something I would normally do anyway, <laughs> you know, to, and then to, but to be able to come up with some of the resources that we would need to help to make that a little bit easier to be able to help him. Okay. So. Um, the other thing is with his part of his learning and his speech, he loves books. So they approved a portion of his funding to be able to get some books for him to read. Um, and he's, he's really enjoying that part of it too. So, yeah. That's awesome. That's fantastic to hear. So you would say that your primary role as his caregiver is safety and just daily needs with getting ready and um learning and making sure that he's at the right place at the right time um, but primarily safety you'd say exactly it's actually written into his care plan that he is never to be left alone okay that is actually in his care plan and part of the struggle was well when he goes to bed what if he gets up what if he's wandering around and um, i finally just took him in my room with me and at least for that this time, that's what's working for us to make sure I'm a light sleeper. So I will wake up if he if he gets up. But, okay. you know, eventually we'll transition him into his own room and that type of thing. So. Okay. Okay. And how long have you been working with ACRA? 
oh boy, uh, this is the second year that we've been working with ACRA and um, really look forward to being able to see, the, you know, all these opportunities that have been opened up to him. I mean, just being able to, to have that safety piece of it is huge for us. Um, but then also some of the sensory things they recently approved for um, a crash pad. If you're familiar with autism, a crash pad is a little place where they can uh, um, have a little bit of that sensory time if they're feeling a little overloaded, a little overstimulated, and, and they right. approve that as part of his funding as well. So not just the safety piece, but those things as well. Okay. And why did you initially choose ACRA um, to partner with? Well, we had our care, the, the gal that kind of puts together our care plan, and she suggested she had two different options and kind of gave us the background and options of both of them. And ACRA just seemed like it would be a better fit to what we were looking for, for the help that we needed. Um, you know, their, their office is here in uh, Minnesota and, and uh, just seemed very easy to work with. And mm -hmm. so that w that's what we've stayed with and we trust them. Great. So. And you work um, with the FMS program, yes. correct? Yes, we do. Okay. Okay, perfect. Um, can you kind of tell me what a typical day looks like for you and Kyler? We, we try really hard to have a, a, a good schedule, try to keep on track. Sometimes um, if we don't, then that does affect his, um, his behavior and, and he'll act out a little bit more. Otherwise, he's a pretty easygoing little guy. Um, mm -hmm. So our typical morning, I usually get up and I get myself ready. And then I go in and I wake him up. Um, okay. You know, I get up, I, I just switched jobs. So it looks a little bit different. My start times might be a little bit different. But I get him up and I usually get him dressed when he's half half asleep. Um, mm -hmm. He's gotten used to that routine. Get him a, his vitamin. We do our teeth brushing. Um, we actually have visuals. We okay. have Velcro visuals that show him these are the steps of our day. First, we put on our underpants. Then we put on our pants. Then we put on our shirt, socks, shoes. We get our backpack and our coat and then a picture of our vehicle. Then, you know, then it's time to go. He goes to daycare um, during the week and he has breakfast there. And then from there, he goes to preschool and then um, back to the back to the daycare and we pick him up from there. When he gets home, we try to have supper ready for him right when he gets home because he is a growing hungry little boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's in the 98th percentile according to um, his recent doctor visit. Um, and he is um, really accomplishing a lot of things that we didn't know he would ever be able to do. I can yeah. touch on a few of those things that how much the everything has helped him. Um, and then it's usually a little bit of playtime, bath time. We'll try to do stories. We don't watch a lot of television. Um, I don't have a TV subscriber. We just have movies. And so we can monitor um, what's actually coming in a little bit better. Um, if he has, he doesn't have a lot of homework, but during distance learning, we did have a lot of online things that he worked on during that time. Um, but then it's really bath time. He usually will go to bed for me about 7, 30, 8 o'clock. Okay. Um, and brushing his teeth again. We're really big on that. He had some dental stuff early on in his life and um, just recently came back from the dentist with no, no cavities, no work needed. Uh, we were not able to get him to go to a regular dentist um, until just this past year. Uh, we okay. went through five different dentists before we had to sedate him previous. So this okay. was huge okay. for him this year. Right. The other thing is we've had to go to a special person for haircuts. Okay. And um, now he allows us, um, he'll sit on my lap and he'll allow his dad to shave his hair. These things are huge. Yeah. Um, and as a caregiver, simple things like cleaning his ears and clipping his toenails, he finally lets me do those things. He trusts me to do those. He'll cringe, but he doesn't yeah. scream or fight or anything like that. He trusts us. So Yeah, that's great. That's good to hear. Yes. Um, can you talk a little bit about what life was like before you teamed up with ACRA? Oh, boy. Um, 
he came out of a situation with his dad now has uh, my his dad my son has full custody but he came out of a, a kind of a bad domestic background um his mother was removed from the home and lost custody completely no visits um with her but that was a very um up and down um he hadn't been diagnosed um he was just a handful, didn't sleep properly, um, wasn't eating very well. Sometimes he can have stomach upset, that kind of a thing, but he's very good about um, trying more foods now and eating better. Um, so it was, it was chaos many times that night with him, you know, crying and not wanting to go to sleep. And uh, part of it, recognizing that where he slept was kind of wide open with his other siblings. And if they would be up and playing games, watching movies, whatever, mm -hmm. too much stimulation, lights off and on, too much noise. So we've really, really limited that. Like I said, he stays in with me. We keep all the lights down. Um, I keep it very quiet and it's closed off and he can go to sleep. Um, doesn't even need a night light anymore. I have a blue light that's like an ocean light for the ceiling but he turned, we turn that off when he goes to bed. Okay. So. It sounds like he's doing fantastic. So that he is really is. He's starting to talk more. He's learned the um, word no. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's learned some sign. Okay. Um, one of the things cool. that he finally was able to, he, he wrote me a note that said, I heart you. Oh, um, one that. of the things that, you know, he can do now, I love you. Oh. And I cried. That was yeah. huge because, you know, I, I didn't know he would get to that point, but right. he can recognize his name. He can write his name. Okay. Um, I tried several things. I put dog tags on his, um, I shouldn't say dog tags, like ID tags, like mm -hmm. uh, military dog tags, okay. that kind of dog tag on right. his backpack and on his coats, things like that. Because if he were to get lost, um, I don't know that he'd be able to tell him who he was. And I also found online where they actually have tattoos. That's a temporary oh. tattoo. If you're going to an event, you can put their name and your phone number for contact if you should get lost. Yeah, that's smart. Mm -hmm. uh, I know law enforcement does have options for um, monitoring some of the kids too. That might be something in the future if he does not overcome the over, you know, the eloping. Right. But so far we have not gone to that measure. So, okay. yeah. Great. Um, and then can you describe, how would you describe ACRA to somebody who wasn't sure what, what they, what they were or what services? Um, oh gosh, I can't even begin to explain how just the difference it made in our lives. You know, we were every day concerned that he was going to get out the door. Uh, I know at one point he ran across the field and he, he, ran out onto the busy road this was before he was diagnosed ran out onto the busy road and a truck stopped right in front of him i mean it was terrifying right just course. terrifying and um things could have looked a lot different for our family and so acro really stepped in and helped us and it was a big ticket item to come up with a, a fence and the labor and that kind right. of thing for that. That's a big expense, but yeah. it's something that's made a world of difference for us and for him. Um, you know, I don't know that the day won't come when he'll figure out to, to get over that fence, mm -hmm. you know, but for now he's able to be a kid and be outside and safely be in the backyard and uh, not have those concerns, not be uh, tempted to just run off because it's wide open. So, right. yeah. That's awesome. Well, I'm glad to hear that ACRA has made such a profound impact on your lives. They really have. And like I said, a big part of it is I mean, we didn't have the experience. We didn't know the financial piece of this. What do we do? What qualifies? What doesn't qualify? Um, those things may change for him with whatever he needs um, as he gets older. And so it's just to try to do the best that we can do to make sure that he is safe and taken care of so yeah yep yeah, that's all that matters right okay great well is there anything else that i'm missing or that you would like to touch on 
I think, um, you know, one of the gals that I've worked with was uh, Kathy Reichel. I work with her quite a bit. You know, I have a, a good contact with her. And if there's something, you know, we're filling out a timesheet and I don't know or understand something that I'm doing, maybe I've put a, a date in there wrong or something because just learning not as uh, familiar with the paper timesheets they use, that yeah. kind of thing, at least for now. Um, and she's been very good about reaching out and saying, hey, wait a minute, um, you know, you didn't sign this or something along right. those lines. It's been very good and then, you know, catching those things for me quickly. And also saying, you know, this is where the budget's at. They're always updating me and letting us know, um, you know, if, if, so if we're getting close to uh, the end of the, the year and the, fu the funds are starting to run low, you know, we may want to reevaluate some of those things. So 